Is there room for two value GPU brands? In this video, we're looking against the uh, Intel Arc A770. I have the Predator Bifrost OC version. Up against AMD's newly launched RX 7600, I have the reference model. And the 7600 comes in at $270 with eight gigabytes of VRAM. And VRAM has be, been a big uh, <laughs> discussion point lately. Whereas our A770s are coming in, well, there's a $330 model that comes in with only eight gigabytes of VRAM. And then if you spend a little bit more, you can get $350 for the A770 16 gigabyte. And the particular version I have here costs $360 16 gigabyte. So Intel heavily markets as a value proposition against NVIDIA, but never mentions AMD in those discussions. So let's pit these head to head. They just don't cost the same. The A770 is noticeably more expensive. So let's see if the extra VRAM and maybe there's extra performance on the table. Let's run the benchmarks and find out if they can justify this higher price tag. So many new games are gonna be using Unreal Engine 5, but right now Epic's own Fortnite is the main AAA release with it available, so we're testing the replay footage, see how they're performing here, and maxed out at 1080p. This is epic settings with ray tracing on. Well, honestly, neither GPU is doing great. Although the RX 7600 is ahead by 16% in the averages and 13% in the 1% lows, but that really only puts it into the mid 40s uh, average FPS range, whereas the ARC A770 is hanging out in the upper 30s. But what if we turn ray tracing off and reduce down to the high settings instead of the epic settings? Well, the ARC A770 is now almost averaging 60 FPS, although it's actually still hanging out down in the 50s. But the 7600 is now over 80 FPS. And this is giving the RX 7600 a 46% lead in average frames per second. And it's getting it a 64% lead in the 1% lows, which is even more significant. We've got an over 60 FPS 1% low number on the 7600, uh, which is significantly better. But what if we go to 1440p, epic settings with ray tracing on? We now see Intel's Arc A770 taking a small lead at 4% on average, but 57% in the 1% lows. However, this is a bit of a Pyrrhic victory since the A770 is still unable to actually average 30 frames per second at these settings. Now what's going on here? Well, a couple of things. One thing is Intel's architecture does have a heavier emphasis on ray tracing. Also, it tends to not lose as much uh, FPS going up resolutions. Um, but then also just they're both kind of dying there. <laughs> Could be VRAM related as well. But if we drop down to 1440p high settings without ray tracing enabled, uh, we now see it swing back to the RX 7600 with a 26% lead on average and a 27% lead in the 1% lows. The 7600 is not quite getting to 60 frames per second on average, but it is up in the mid 50s, whereas the A770 is down in the lower 40s. So it certainly seems like at the settings you would be more likely to actually use because they're producing better frame rates. Uh, that the RX 7600 has a commanding lead in Unreal Engine 5 at this time. But how about one of the latest releases? This one's on Unreal Engine 4. This is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. We're starting out looking at maxed out 1080p, so epic settings, with ray tracing enabled. And even with ray tracing enabled, the RX 7600 is leading by 7% on average, although the A770 does have a small, le uh, well, a 13% lead in the 1% lows. Neither GPU here is delivering a 60 frames per second experience. So uh, th while they are playable, I think many people would be interested in turning down settings because we're not even quite getting to a 50 FPS average. Um, so if we turn down to the high settings and turn ray tracing off, now I see a 6% lead for the RX 6, uh, 7600, although now its 1% lows are significantly more stable um, giving it a 48% lead in the 1% lows over the A770, which is kind of a big deal. The 1% lows are actually around 60 frames per second. You'd have a much easier time, uh, you know, frame capping if you wanted to to 60 FPS and not dipping. It's a much more consistent experience. Um, 
So again, I think I would call this a lead for the RX 7600 at 1080p. What if we jump up resolution to 1440p? Well, again, first, if we max everything out, epic settings, ray tracing on, the GPUs are, once again, very similar in average FPS. This time, though, the A770 is now ahead by 3%. Um, but the 1% lows are a much uh, much healthier lead for the A770 at 38%. However, percentages at this level might be a little misleading in the sense that, well, both GPUs aren't doing well, and we're talking the difference between 1% lows in the teens versus the 20s. So realistically, I don't think these are the settings uh, that most people would want to use anyway. If we turn down to the high preset and turn ray tracing off, uh, we're now seeing, once again, the average FPS extremely similar uh, with a 4% lead for the A770. But now the 1% lows are, are a heavy lead in AMD's favor with a 36% lead in the 1% lows. Although honestly, neither GPU is really knocking it out of the park here. Uh, we're averaging uh, you know, in the upper 40 FPS range. Um, certainly the better 1% lows on the 7600 would help things feel a little bit smoother. And this is very playable, although I think a lot of people might wanna turn things down further. Now, let's look at another current gen only release with excellent graphics. This one, Plague Tale Requiem at 1080p Ultra. And I think this is one of the best looking games out there. And unlike Jedi Survivor, this game doesn't use that much VRAM. You can look at the memory line and they're not using all that much. Uh, the A770 is tied with the uh, uh, 7600 on average, but look at the 1% lows, a 39% lead, and the frame time graph is extremely spiky on the A770. So despite the similar average FPS, I think this would be a much smoother experience on the RX 7600. But what if we go up to 1440p where we have seen um, the ARC GPU sometimes scale a little bit better? Well, now it does have a 7% lead on average and actually it's 1% lows are smoother now. So I have no idea why at 1080p we were getting a spiky frame time graph on the A770 and not at 1440p, but that is what happened. And I saw a similar frame time graph when I tested my A750 a couple months ago. Uh, so anyway, I wanted to test a VRAM hungry game uh, that's a PS5 exclusive like The Last of Us Part 1, but when I did so, the A770 couldn't even launch the game consistently. It would just crash, so I, I was just unable to test it. Uh, the RX 7600 at 1080p high preset uh, is averaging in the mid 70s with 1% lows around 69, nice. So getting a very playable experience, uh, whereas the A770, like I said, was just crashing when I would try to launch it. Now, during the editing process, I have noticed that there is a small update to patch 1.0.5 with a 0.1 at the end, with including general stability improvements, but also mentions that it fixed a crash on boot impacting all in Intel Arc GPUs. So theoretically, if I went back and uh, tested again, it's possible I could get some comparison data here. Um, but again, during my editing process, um, you know, I don't have time to do that. I'm putting the video together now. So I'm just showing you guys that the Intel Arc GPU wasn't working at the time of the benchmarks uh, were completed. Now, if we go to another PS5 exclusive that has been ported to PC, uh, we now see the uh, Intel Arc A770 delivering a uh, pretty good showing, basically tied with the 7600. Although the 7600 is 3% ahead, I don't think that's a noticeable difference. And this time the 1% lows aren't giving us any drama. The A770 is ahead by 4% and the 1% lows, but just in general, both GPUs are giving us kind of a upper mid 70s experience with 1% lows around 50. Um, now, if we go up to 1440p, again, we do see that, that Intel's architecture does scale a little bit better to higher resolutions, and that gives it a 7% lead on average, but now a 17% lead in the 1% lows, which might be a little bit more noticeable. So while you're getting around a 60 FPS experience on the A770, you're in the upper 50s with much lower 1% lows on the 7600. Now, one more PlayStation 5 exclusive game. Uh, how about Forspoken, 
we're looking at the 1080p ultra high preset, which does include some ray tracing. And this is an extremely VRAM hungry game. And I think that's explaining the 38% lead for the ARC A770. And it's playable at like a 45-ish average, but honestly, I'd probably turn settings down on both GPUs if I wasn't just, uh, you know, torture testing them in some benchmarks. Now, if we go up to 1440p resolution, the ARC A770 now stretches its relative performance lead to 44%, although now I think you'd be even less likely to play at these settings, considering the averages are only in the 30s now for the A770. But it is a big relative performance lead for the uh, Intel GPU. Now, jumping into some cross-gen games, let's look at Resident Evil 4. This is the 1080p prioritize graphics settings. And the ARC A770 is winning by 7% on average, but the 7600 actually has a 29% lead in the 1% lows. So a more consistent experience on the RX 7600 uh, without a massive difference in the overall averages. If we go to 1440p prioritized graphics, we now see a 13% lead for the ARC A770. So again, scaling a little bit better as the resolution increases, but the 1% lows are still a win for the AMD GPU at 13%. Again, if you look at the frame time graph, you see tiny little stutters on the 770 that just look completely smooth on the 7600. Um, but again, higher overall frame rate on the A770. Now, what if we go to the actual maximum preset, which does include ray tracing and kicks the VRAM demands absolutely through the roof? Well, now the A770 is actually tripling the performance of the RX 7600, which is just completely unusable. And its 1% uh, lows are eight times better. However, I don't think ray tracing looks very good in this game, and now the A770 is averaging below 60 frames per second. So honestly, I even turned off RT on my 4090 in that game. Now, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 1080p Balanced uh, is a huge lead for the 7600 uh, with an 83% better average frame rate and doubling the 1% lows. We're talking 1% lows of over 120 versus around 60. That is a massive difference, especially in a competitive game. So if you spend a lot of time playing Warzone 2 or Modern Warfare 2, I think uh, you would definitely want to go the AMD route in this game. And um, we're seeing at 1440p, once again, the A770 does scale better relatively, but it started out so far behind, it's nowhere near catching up, uh, giving us a 46% lead on average for the RX 7600 and a 45% lead in the 1% lows. So again, if this is your game, um, I don't think you should be considering Intel over AMD. How about Cyberpunk 2077 at the ultra settings where we'll start out at 1080p? Well, this is another one of the games where the GPUs are basically tied on average. The 1% lows are a small advantage, 10% uh, for the 7600, the averages are a 4% lead. I think in general, you'd have a hard time telling which GPU you were using, but it does look like a small win for the 7600. But what if we kick up the resolution? And again, we see the A770 scale a little bit better relatively uh, when we increase resolution. 6% uh, lead now on averages and 4% lead in the 1% lows for the A770. Still extremely similar performance uh, where I think overall you'd have trouble telling which GPU you were using. Neither one is giving you a 60 FPS experience. Um, kind of upper 50s on the A770 and lower mid 50s on the, on the 7600. But what if you crank ray tracing? As mentioned earlier in the video, uh, the Intel architecture is a lot more focused on dedicating hardware space for ray tracing acceleration. And we see the A770 78% ahead in the averages and over doubling the performance in the 1% lows at 1080p ray tracing ultra. But it's a bit of a Pyrrhic victory because it gets at about 30 FPS versus 17 or 18. So in other words, you could play the game this way, but I wouldn't really recommend it on either GPU. Um, maybe some upscaling. Well, this is interesting. This game does support Intel's own XESS upscaling, as well as AMD's FSR2. I've set them both to the quality preset. 
Um, and now we're seeing the A770s lead drop to 29% on averages, 41% lead in the 1% lows. Although image quality wise, I think XCSS actually is looking better than FSR2 quality here. I think it is more similar to DLSS in image quality, where I think FSR2 is still lagging behind a little bit. Uh, if we go all the way to the performance setting, the A770 is now able to deliver around 60 frames per second, whereas the 7600 just can't do it. It's still in the mid 40s. Uh, this is a 43% lead for the A770, 58% the 1% lows, and image quality wise, uh, XESS is looking significantly better. Like look at those palm tree branches. It's just uh, a better upscaler and better ray tracing performance on the A770. We've seen the benchmarks, we've seen the prices. And speaking of the prices, 350 divided by 270 is about 1.3, meaning the A770 16 gigabyte costs 30% more than the RX 7600 and it does not usually deliver 30% better performance. In many games, these GPUs performed about the same. Uh, in some other games, like especially in Unreal Engine 5, uh, which is a really big deal because of how many games will be coming out in Unreal Engine 5, so I'll be curious as more games come out if we continue to see this or if it's just a Fortnite thing, but uh, the A770 did not perform well uh, versus the, uh, the 7600. Uh, in that particular matchup, uh, whereas in, in others, it performed about the same. Did we ever see it come out ahead? Yes. Did we see it come out ahead by 30%? It can, but when it did, it was mostly because, well, Intel does seem to scale a little bit better to higher resolutions. It does have the 16 gigabytes of VRAM, so if you're spilling over 8 gigabytes of VRAM, that factors in. And Intel did seem to have a heavier focus on ray tracing performance on its hardware, meaning when we did look at maybe 1440p with ray tracing enabled at max settings, we could get to places where the, uh, or even just heavy ray tracing performance, uh, even at 1080p, we could see places where the uh, A770 was justifying 30% more price because it was delivering 30% or more, you know, better performance. But the problem is, are those the settings you would actually be playing those games at? Because the overall per strength of the A770 isn't necessarily strong enough to support those types of settings at high enough frame rates that I think people would actually be using them. So in other words, it's nice to see the 16 gigabyte card and, and an architecture that scales well to higher resolutions, but when the overall performance level of the card maybe isn't strong enough to support ray tracing at high resolutions, then I'm not sure it's really worth paying that much more for that uh, performance that you're not necessarily gonna be able to take advantage of. Now, that being said, having that extra 16 gigabytes of VRAM is a good thing, and I think it will help you be able to use things like maximum textures and things like that, which don't really require extra performance as long as you have the VRAM capacity to support them. But I think overall, is it enough to justify an $80 price increase or 30% price increase uh, over a card like the RX 7600? And I think the answer is just no. If I was buying uh, one of these two GPUs right now, I think the 7600 is offering significantly better value. And I think value is an inc incredibly important thing for both of these GPUs because quite frankly, NVIDIA has already established itself as the market share leader and the mind share leader. So the other companies are gonna have to compete on value to gain the hearts and minds of the, <laughs> of the uh, uh, GPU consumer. And so with value being the, uh, the name of the game, if you're deciding between AMD and Intel, uh, I think AMD is offering the better deal here. And I think that that's, um, like I said, that's a really big deal. And I think it shows that Intel is very quick to point out the value proposition, the performance per dollar compared directly to Nvidia. However, they never include AMD in those comparisons because they're, not going to do as favorably as they do against NVIDIA. Also, I should mention that uh, I think the, the set of games that I benchmark um, are you know some of the latest releases. Because I benchmarked the latest releases, I've actually given Intel a much easier time here than I could have if I had intentionally selected older games because that's another place where Intel is going to struggle. 
they haven't had the decade or more of time to build up driver support and optimizations for thousands of PC games that have released over the years. And they're, uh, so basically AMD and NVIDIA just have more driver optimizations for a lot of older titles that Intel just simply does not have. So I could have given them a much harder uh, time in this video than I even did by focusing on the big major AAA releases uh, things like that, um, especially games that have launched since Intel Arc GPUs existed and they've had a chance to optimize all that. And even then we saw like The Last of Us Part 1 literally just not launching on my Intel GPU. Now it looks like that's been patched since then. But again, um, I think from a just a smoothness of the user experience, uh, AMD is going to offer a, a better experience overall. Now, Intel I, did have some other advantages. Like I said, the scaling to higher resolutions, the increased VRAM, but also uh, upscaling technology. This is interesting. Intel's XESS, uh, I did think was looking better image quality wise than FSR2. Now it's not always better at everything. I think FSR2 has a little bit less ghosting, but I think just from the quality of the and stableness of the reconstruction, I do think XESS, uh, is a little more similar to DLSS in that, especially at the more aggressive settings and lower resolutions, I do think it looks better. Now, something I might look at in a future video is that they can also use each other's upscaling technology. You can use FSR on, um, on an Intel GPU and you can use XESS on an AMD GPU. Although XESS is hardware accelerated more efficiently on Intel GPUs, so I think uh, the performance of FSR on AMD GPUs will be better. Uh, we could maybe look at the image quality, uh, dial some things in on that and maybe a future video could be interesting. Also, I should mention that FSR is just supported in a far larger set of games than XESS, but since Intel can use FSR when it's available, but then also use XESS um, and have better acceleration on it than AMD does when it uses it, I do think from an upscaling perspective, um, I think maybe a slight win for Intel there, just because they both support each other's stuff, but Intel runs XESS better than AMD does, and it looks a little better when it's available. Anyway, um, I feel like I'm kind of picking apart the various differences at this point. I think overall, these two between these two GPUs, they're both going to be uh, a value purchase if you're not buying NVIDIA, which means I think that AMD is offering the better value here. If you're curious how the $350 uh, ARC GPU with 16 gigabytes fares against the uh, 4060 Ti that just launched from NVIDIA, I have already done that comparison video. Um, so, you know, spend $50 more on a 4060 Ti to cut your VRAM in half compared to the A770, but how does the overall performance look? Uh, should you save the $50 and double your VRAM or does the 4060 Ti just outclass it anyway? We'll go ahead and watch my comparison on that one. Uh, next, if you're interested in your ARC GPU business. Also, a while back, I did take a look at the A750 up against um, some uh, AMD and Intel, uh, sorry, AMD and Nvidia competitors in the same price class. Uh, so you could take a look at that one as well. And I hope all of you have an excellent day and a huge thank you to my channel members who clicked the join button to support the channel directly. Um, I do not get sent uh, Intel GPUs for free. I'm not on their sample list. So, like I had to buy the, uh, the A770 uh, for, for my comparisons I'm doing here along with some other ones. So it is very helpful uh, for, for the people who have clicked the join button to support the channel directly. And huge thank you to all my subscribers, just everybody who watches the videos that helps it boost in the algorithm and all that. And once again, I hope everyone every, uh, has an uh, excellent day.